Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. So this week what we're going to be doing is working on a Sega Nomad. The Sega Nomad is a portable version of the Sega Genesis that was released around 1997. So, you know, at the time this was a really cool way to play Sega Genesis games on the go, and I think it was another way that Sega just tried to, exp you know, extend the life of uh, the Sega Genesis. So, so yeah, as you can see, there are some limitations to this console, one of which is the screen here. So, you know, it isn't really the best screen. Um, I mean, for the late 90s, this certainly was a good option for a screen because it was backlit, but uh, it's extremely inefficient with energy. So uh, if you put in six batteries to play this portably, you're probably going to get like maybe two hours of, of playtime on it. Um, it's also not that great in the sense that you get lots of ghosting and artifacts and, you know, the image is really not crisp. It's hard to even read text on it. So nowadays, yeah, we can do a lot better. We can take the screen out and we can replace it with a modern TFT screen uh, that's way more energy efficient and a lot more crisp. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And we're also going to do a small modification that also allows you to play Sega Master System games on this console. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so disassembly of the Nomad is actually quite simple. All you really need are Phillips screwdriver and a game bit screwdriver, like this one right here. So there's a game bit screw here in the center, and then the other four here on the periphery, those are all Phillips. So then, yeah, from there, all you gotta do is just open it up, and it has two halves. Um, this shielded half here is where most of the Genesis components are, and then I think most of this is related to controlling audio and, and, the, and the screen. And so to separate them, all you got to do is pull these two bales back on the side here, and then you can just pull this ribbon cable right off, and we can set the Genesis component off to the side. From here, you'll see a whole bunch of Phillips screws, and you just got to go ahead and get those removed. Okay, so that's all set. Uh, only other thing I have to do now is just remove this connection here and remove this one here. This is for the speaker and for the start and select daughter board over here. And once that's done, then I can remove the entire board. All right, so the, the screen daughter board is removed. And so you can see here's the screen right here. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and remove that screen. So first thing you gotta do is just take this little power plug here. This is what powers the backlight. And we're just gonna disconnect that like so. And we're going to lift this little grounding strap up and out of the way, and then we've got to remove all of this. So first thing I need to do is just get this tape off. Okay, so that tape's out of the way. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and we can remove the screen. And you know, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can use a scalpel to do this, but I'm going to try to be a little bit more subtle about it and not do anything potentially harmful here. So to do that, I'm just going to take my soldering iron, which is already heated up. I'm just going to go ahead and pass the heat over it and remove it. And this isn't too different from what I do to remove a Game Gear screen. Same general principle here. Okay, so there we go. Now the screen has been removed, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the uh, installation of the new screen. All right, so the next step is going to be to install the um, the new screen. And so this is the screen, and this was purchased from Console 5, and I have a link for this screen in the description. So basically, it accepts composite video and outputs it on this TFT. It's way more energy efficient than the original, and it looks a lot better, too. So it comes with this little this little connector that goes into the socket right here. And uh, if you look at these wires, the yellow wire is video coming in. These two are both ground, so we honestly only need one of these. And then this one here is power for the, for the screen. So we're going to go ahead and just basically make a little adapter to this so that the wires are a little bit longer, because these wires are too short for what we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
All right, so now that those connections are all made, we're gonna go ahead and um, just flip the board over. We're gonna push this into the bracket so it's nice and secure, which seems to be just fine. And now we're gonna go ahead and actually attach this to the, um, to the board here. So let's go ahead and do that. So all you gotta do is just kind of line everything up and screw everything into place. Alright, so uh, I realize I made extensions to these cables for no reason because once you set up the screen, the, the connections for power and ground are actually right here, so that was kind of unnecessary. I'm sorry about that. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to wire in our, our power for the screen and for ground. So this is a ground connection right here, this, this pin. So I'm going to go ahead and solder those two together. And then right here on the power switch, we can get a supply of our power. And it's actually higher than five volts. I believe it's something like maybe 12 volts. And that's okay because this screen has built-in voltage regulation. So it's actually expecting a voltage that's higher than five. So we're gonna go ahead and just put those two together. And lastly, you'll notice that these wires kind of get in the way, so we're just going to make sure that they kind of bend upwards. We don't want them going anywhere near the D-pad because then that's going to interfere with our ability to, to do really much of anything. We also want to avoid these posts here because they're, these holes here are where the posts are for connecting um, the screen to the plastic. So just trying to get it like this, and uh, that should take care of it. Alright, so uh, we're now going to just do the final little bit of soldering, which is to install this um, video wire and connect it to this little multi-out port. And this is where the Genesis, um, or where the Nomad rather, outputs video using an external connector. So you see where it says TP237. That is um, a test point for where composite video comes out. So all we got to do is just tap into that and uh, that's all that the screen needs in order to receive video. So we're just gonna come in, just add a little dab of solder right there, and that is it. And uh, you can see that I kind of came in underneath the screen like this. So this keeps the wire you know, held in place and out of the way of the buttons, and uh, so that makes the install you know, pretty clean. All right, so, so now that this is all done, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble uh, the Nomad, and we're gonna test the screen and see how everything looks. All right, so I've got everything reassembled, so let's go ahead and power it on really quick and see how everything looks. Yeah, that's much better. I don't know if it's really coming clear on camera, but... With the new screen, things look significantly better. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit and then uh, hopefully that'll make it clear on how things look. So yeah, hopefully this makes it a lot clearer, but it's very crisp, the colors are good. Um, so you know, this, this is still composite video, uh, but so is the original output that we were looking at, and so this is definitely better than that stock screen. It's also way more energy efficient, so if you're playing with batteries, it's gonna last a lot longer. All right, so this part of the mod is finished, so let's go ahead and do the final bit of the mod, which is to add Sega Master System compatibility to the Nomad. Okay, so the final part of the mod involves the uh, back half of the Nomad, so all we've got to do is start by removing all the screws that we can see here. So there are two more screws over here, so once you get that shielding off, just make sure you don't forget about these, otherwise you won't be able to take the board out. And you kind of have to like push right over here where the second player uh, controller port is. But yeah, that's it, we've got it out. 
All right, so I installed this wire and I had to do it off camera because it really required me to have a microscope um, for this particular connection. So um, this is the main part of the, the Nomad. And so, so this, this square ASIC chip over here, it's kind of like a one chip for the SNES. So it combines a whole bunch of functionality that um, used to be broken up into multiple chips on a standard Sega Genesis. So you can see that I've soldered a single wire over here to this one pin. This is pin 45. So if you look down here, you can see I, it starts here at number one and then there's dots going down. So every dot signifies uh, the fifth um, pin. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, and so forth. So you come down to the end over here and you get to pin 45 and that's for Sega Master System functionality and it's connected to nothing on this board. So you have to take a fine piece of 30 gauge Kynar wire, which is what you see here, and I've soldered it to that pin. And then you flip it over onto the opposite side of the board and you just got to solder the other end to this part of the cartridge slot. So that's all you've got to do. It's just a single wire. The only thing that's challenging is that it's rather small. So when you solder to that ASIC chip, you really need some sort of magnification like a microscope. At some point, I need to get a camera for my scope because then I could demonstrate this um, more clearly in, in my YouTube video. So hopefully I'll get that going at some point in the future. All right, so all these modifications are done. So let's go ahead and do a final assembly and then we'll test out Sega Master System functionality with a flash cartridge. All right, so we're back and I've loaded up a Sega Master System game with my Mega SD and everything seems to be working great. So now uh, this Nomad has a nice new screen um, and it's got the ability to play Sega Master System games. And you can either do this with a flash cartridge or you can do it with a Master System to Genesis adapter, which um, are now available. All right, guys, so if you like this kind of content, then it would be great if you could uh, give me a thumbs up or potentially subscribe to the channel. I've got videos like this every week, um, and definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right, thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye.